Hey everyone, so for this video I'm going to go over direct drive wheelbase options and ecosystems. Ideally this video is for someone who has a belt driven wheel and doesn't know where to start when looking at direct drive wheelbases, or at least wants to know all their options before taking the plunge. I'll first go over a brief but comprehensive overview of how these systems work, and later the pros and cons of each along with how I ranked them on price versus performance. So what is a direct drive wheel and how is it different from a belt or gear driven wheels? Direct drive wheels are known for providing stronger, faster, and more detailed force feedback to the user. The reason for that is due to the motor being connected directly to the output shaft which connects to your wheel. So there's no belts or gears to dampen the signals or get in the way. Because of this, direct drive wheels react faster to signals, which makes them easier to catch slides in game and drive the car on edge. It's a much more natural feeling compared to a belt or gear driven wheel. In addition, they're able to output more detail due to its design. You can feel the curbs better, gravel, and tire flex. Lastly, they have more torque. For me, the extra torque lets me turn up the gain so I can notice the signals uh, that would be too light otherwise. You don't need to run a direct drive at a high power, but there's benefits uh, other than just the torque for the wheel. A lot of people will turn them up uh, though for some, to cause some more immersion, uh, along with making the signals easier to interpret. So direct drive wheels work differently from for the end user compared to all-in-one belt gear driven wheels. You have your base, your quick release, and the button box slash wheel combination. The box is where the motor is and the force feedback is outputted through that output shaft. The quick release connects the wheel to the base, but there are many different types of quick releases. They all essentially do the same thing in their own way. It's a way to easily attach and detach wheels to your base without busting out a socket wrench or a screwdriver. So each quick release has one side meant for the wheel base and another to mount on your actual wheel. Now some are stronger than others and there's slight pros and cons to each. Some direct drives come with their own quick release but on many bases you could run whatever quick release you wish such as a HRS Zero Play, Q1R, or ball bearing NRG style. All of them work well. They use a standard bolt pattern, 70 millimeters PCD, which is commonly used in real cars as well. On the wheel side of the quick release is where you mount a wheel and or a button box combination. Now, how do you connect the wheel buttons to your computer? You need to map your shifters, right? It's pretty simple actually. So most of the USB, most of them are USB and come with a coiled USB cable. So you get an extension or USB hub, plug the wheel button box or plate into that and you're good to go. Your wheel buttons and your wheelbase are considered two separate peripherals even though you have them use them together. Uh, it's similar to plugging your Thrustmaster pedals via USB straight to the computer instead of the base itself. So it still works, uh, the computer just looks at it as two different types of peripherals. So for this I wanted to show just how the SemiCube quick release system works because it's the one I have. So you have the side that stays on the base, the base side quick release, and the one on the back of the wheel. They slide on each other with a pin but each one's slightly different. Uh, there's also, here's the USB that goes to the button plate or button box. So you just attach the quick release. Uh, they're all a little bit different, as I said, but SemiCube has this pin that you slide through here. All right, and then obviously you want to plug in the USB. So the coiled part uh, stays around the wheel, so when you turn the wheel it stretches. Uh, you can't really feel it when you're driving whatsoever, so that's just to demonstrate how that works. So you have the actual button plate, the wheel, uh, the spacer, and just a quick release. You don't need a spacer, but that kind of shows how it's all sandwiched together. That bolt pattern is 70 PCD, which is standard. So here I am just unplugging it, pull the pin, and that's it. It's off. So then the benefit of this is you could constantly just uh, change wheels super easily. So here I just have a bare rim I use for like American Trucks, truck Sim or Rally, uh, other simple things like that where I don't need to shift because I have the external H shifter. Easy as that. And then here is Yet another wheel, another USB one, this is the GSI Formula Pro Elite, same thing, slide it on, and then you have the pin.
and you have the USB that comes off the back of the wheel. This one isn't sandwiched together with like a rim and button plate, it's all together. Um, as you can see, it's kind of just like a formula wheel. Also has the screen on there. And that's it, that's basically how it works, so it's pretty expandable. Now, let's talk about different brands of direct drive wheels. First, I'll go over the Fanatec direct drive ecosystem briefly. It's the main one that works slightly differently than others, so it's good to get out of the way first. Uh, the best way to describe their ecosystem is plug and play. They're the only direct drives that work on console as well as PC. Fanatec has its own propriety, proprietary quick release system that connects to the wheel button plate, to the base, and therefore to your computer. It is how all belt or gear driven wheelbases work essentially, so there's no external dangling USB cable. So as long as you buy a Fanatec wheel, the button plate and wheel will work immediately. Uh, this does however limit to your limit you to their ecosystem for actual wheels and button boxes. You can get conversion kits to adapt non-Fanatec wheels, but if you're going to do that uh, and step outside the Fanatec ecosystem, it might be worth the hassle to skip Fanatec entirely uh, as the aftermarket wheels are tricky to get working. Next up would be Simicube. Simicube is the top of the line direct drive base that makes sense to buy today. Um, I'm skipping Leo Bodner just because they're extremely expensive. The force feedback quality tends to be the best and above Fanatec's offerings, which is pretty spectacular as it is. Simicube bases work the same as not other non-Fanatec direct drive bases. You have the base and wheel side quick releases and your wheel and or button box combo. This opens up your options. Uh, while Fanatec bases only work easily with Fanatec rims, you can get basically anything to mate up to your direct drive with just a quick release and a USB. Simicube has an expensive ace up its sleeve though. And which comes in the form of the Simicube Certified Compatible Wheels. Uh, certified Wireless, I apologize. So there's a sensor in the base and in the wheel, and you can make that connection wirelessly. You don't need to use the wireless wheels. Um, I have a Simicube myself, and I skipped it just to save some cash. The coiled cable also works perfectly. It really isn't noticeable while you're using the base. Now, what if you don't want to spend $1,500 on just a wheelbase? And honestly, I don't blame you. There's other cheaper direct drive options ahead. Next up is the VRS Direct Force Pro. I recommend this one above all. It works just like the Semicube and other direct drives. So you have the base, a quick release of your own choosing that attaches to the output shaft, and then just bolt up whatever wheel button box uh, you want to use as long as it's USB. Now this is more bare bones compared to the Simicube. I have not tried the VRS base myself, but there are many comparison videos out there from reputable YouTubers who say the detail is almost identical to Simicube and still above the Podium series from Fanatec. Next you have two lower end direct drive wheel bases. These use stepper motors as opposed to a servo motor on the wheels previously mentioned. A servo motor is completely smooth when you turn it and a stepper motor has very tiny steps that you could sometimes feel when you're driving and when the wheel is off. The first stepper motor direct drive bases is the AccuForce V2. It has an advantage of coming with a wheel rim and a button box for a pretty tempting price. It also comes with Sim Commander, which is a very powerful software that you could use for motion systems and base shakers. Now this wheel has max torque of 13 Newton meters, which is roughly half the power of the wheels that I mentioned before. That being said, uh, people rarely use the direct drive bases at such high torque levels, so the max power really isn't too much of an issue. But keep in mind the power does tend to correlate with the detail and how fast the wheel can react to in-game signals. I have used an AccuForce base before, uh, I've owned it for about a year, and now I have a Simicube, and the differences between the two are pretty major even though I run them at similar power levels. Next up is the Simmagic M10. This is another stepper motor direct drive and it maxes out at 10 newton meters of torque. It also uses a stepper motor so be aware that you're going to feel the steps when using it and it has even less power than the AccuForce wheel. If you're considering this wheel I highly recommend looking at some of the review comparison videos out there because I have not tried it myself. They also offer two wheels that have a similar quick release connection to what Fanatec does where the USB connection is actually through the quick release itself which eliminates the external USB cable. Lastly is the newest addition, it's the Fanatec CSL Direct Drive. 
It's not a stepper motor, it's a servo, servo motor like the other upper end wheels. I'm just saving it for last as it has the least power overall at 8 new meters with their boost kit and 5 without the boost kit. This is the most affordable direct drive on the market and it would be a huge upgrade if you're coming from a Logitech or lower end Thrustmaster wheel, but the lack of power will be very apparent to the other direct drive wheels. So why should you buy a direct drive wheel? Uh, mainly they provide extra immersion so driving feels closer to real life. The direct drive wheel bases don't feel like toys as most belt and gear driven wheels do. The extra detail and speed helps you be more consistent. It won't make you any faster, but being able to predict what the car will do in the sim more accurately helps with consistency overall. They also provide greater expandability over gear and belt driven wheels and you have options to use wheels from different manufacturers, uh, either replicas, replicas or totally unique designs. If you like sim racing gear, direct drive bases provide a wide range of wheel options for you. And lastly, it's kind of the end game upgrade. Once you go for a direct drive, it'll be the last wheel base you ever need. That's especially why I recommend going with a VRS, a SimiCube, or a Fanatec Podium. There are also arguments to be made against getting a direct drive wheel base. Number one being they're pretty expensive. Even the lower end systems will add up. You have to factor in the base, the quick release, and the wheel rim, and you're gonna be spending quite a bit. Uh, in addition to that, you're gonna to want to make use of the extra power by putting it on a rig, or else the flex and movement will diminish the extra feel that the direct drive wheel gives you. Secondly, it, it, again, it doesn't make you faster. While the speed and immersion advantage uh, these wheels give you are impressive, it won't actually help you get better lap times. And lastly, if you're content with what you have and you feel like you're racing to the best of your ability currently, there's no real reason to upgrade. But if you're content, then you probably wouldn't be watching this video. So here are my overall thoughts in somewhat of a graph form. It covers the pros and cons of each wheel system. Feel free to pause and go through all the points. Um, something additional to consider is that the CSLDD technically scored very close to the top three but I think the lack of power is significant enough that it's warranted to take away more points, but the graphic is not adjusted for that. In addition, I believe the AccuForce should be considered above the SimMagic due to the power of Sim Commander and Cloud Tuning, as well as it has three Newton meters more torque. So links to the related wheel bases will be uh, listed below, everything I mentioned, as well as the sites that have great wheels and button box combinations to use. Uh, please note the prices in this video were just at the time of filming and they're probably going to change. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. If I got anything wrong, just tell me so when I could edit this video afterwards. Thanks.